Good morning, everybody. It's Saturday. Today we're spending another day at the land here, trying to get some more clearing done. We got this done last time already. I think we made some pretty good progress. I want to see how much further we can get. Oh, I'm actually pretty uh, surprised. I thought that there would still be a lot more snow left here. It's nothing. It is a hot day today, so whatever is left is going to be gone. I see just a little bit left, just a few speckles there by the door. But other than that, everything's looking in order. Brought an extra chain today just in case because this one's getting a little bit stretched out already and I realized last weekend that I'm probably going to have to uh, replace it soon. So got a brand new one right there. Got my chain oil, chain sharpener, gas for the chainsaw, gas for the mower. This is my bushwhacker mower. I think I'm going to buy us a new one for the house and just use this one for out here. That yeah, we'll see. Uh, this one's in pretty rough shape already. Got it at Walmart years ago when I lived in that house trailer. That was a long time ago already. Oh, she's still going good. Just, uh, you gotta watch out. Sometimes she likes shooting things out the back because that guard on the back fell off. It's never happened to me yet, but it's actually never, uh, I shouldn't say it hasn't happened. It just hasn't hit me yet. <laughs> That's why I got my big steel toe boots on, my big work boots. <laughs> Always wear eye protection. I just want to take a moment to appreciate the silence. You know, Steinbeck isn't a very big town. Well, it's a city. It's a small city. Probably about 15,000 people living in town. But uh, it's not that noisy. But when you come out to this place and you just sit and listen, you realize how noisy it actually is. Because this, this is beautiful peace and quiet. You hear that? Exactly. While we're out here, we're gonna free the head. Cause look how white my head is still. I've gotta catch up that tan on my head with the rest of my body. <laughs> so in short bursts, uh, maybe about 10, 15 minutes at a time, I take my hat off, let the skin on my head soak up some scut, soak, soak up some sun uh, so that, uh. I can get past this look of freshly bald, you know? That would be nice. One even color. Anyways, I'm going to get to work here. Uh, you guys have all given me great advice and great ideas for all these stumps. Like this is a whole system of stumps from a bush that I cut down. And uh, I read them all. I appreciate all of your input. As I go about this process of developing this land slowly, uh, I'm going to always be open to advice and uh, listen to the people who have done this before because this is my first time ever building a house. I hope it's my last time too. We just want to build this house, but we want to get it right. We want to get it perfect. We want it to be the house we, we die in, that we retire in. We want to stay here for the rest of our lives. So we want to make it just the way we want it. And we want to put some good thought into it too so that we don't just build something and you know, a year down the road, oh shoot, I wish we would have thought of this. We're also taking our time because of finances. I don't want a big mortgage. I want to have a considerable amount, a good chunk, if not maybe the whole thing, but let's not get too crazy, you know. You never know, might win the lottery. But I want to have a, a enormous sum of money for a down payment so that our, our mortgage can stay low. Because I don't want to be living at the top end of our budget the rest of our lives. I want to be living at a comfortable spot where we can still go out and do some fun things. You know, when we have kids and everything opens up again, we can take them to Disney World and not have to, you know, suffer for it. I want to be able to go on trips and 
go camping, spend money, take my kids fishing, you know, put them through sports, put them through hockey, if that's what they want to do, because hockey's expensive. Hockey's expensive to put your kids through. And I want to be able to have the money to do that for them. But I also want to have a nice good home for them to come home to, feel safe in, feel comfortable in, and be able to enjoy nature like this. So the plan for now is to build in a minimum of five years or so. It's going to be a little while. That's why I'm taking my time with this. I'm slowly clearing this whole area myself here. Uh, I took all of your comments into consideration. I think my best option to get these stumps out of here would be a, uh, an, a little mini excavator. I was gonna rent a skid steer, but I think an excavator might work better for this. Just because, you know, all of these big bumps, I gotta dig in there and I don't wanna tear everything up. I just wanna get the stumps out, right? And it's just like bushes like this. So I'm gonna cut them all down, get this place all opened up, get a little mini excavator in here, dig up all of these big roots, level it off the best I can. And uh, we'll take it from there. I wanna get a driveway brought in. I wanna get some driveway stone for this here. Uh, get nice gravel in, cause this driveway is gonna stay exactly where it is. And uh, our house is gonna be right behind me here. Probably, this will probably be right about around here. And the garage will probably be right around where the pickup and camper is right now in that area. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna bring gravel in get this driveway nice and packed, get a big packed in gravel area here for the camper to sit on in the meantime. Later on, the garage is gonna go on top of it anyway, so it doesn't matter if the grass isn't growing there. This is gonna be our front yard. Our front yard is going to be uh, no dogs allowed. We're gonna have a dog area fenced off in the back, in the bush there. Once again, depending on finances, depending on money, I'd like to go all the way, like a big, big section of this bush fenced off. Uh, uh, several acres at least so that we can uh, you know just let them loose to run off into the bush and we don't have to worry about them running onto the neighbor's yard it's a deterrent for wildlife I know wildlife if they want to get in they're gonna get in anyways but if we have that six foot uh, chain link fence just like we have at our house in uh, in Steinbeck if we have that going around our whole property here or not the whole property but you know several acres of it if we can afford it uh, you know when a bear comes up to that fence you know, he's got a decision to make. Is it worth it to climb over or do you just, huh, oh, I'll just go this way then, right? It does something, a little bit. It will deter neighbor dogs from coming on our property. It'll, it'll stop our dogs from leaving our land. Things to consider, right? We have lots of years to make sure we get it just right. We can tweak this and tweak that, take this plan, change it a little bit, and maybe build on this plan over here so that by the time we build, the house for us is going to be perfect exactly what we wanted exactly what we want to live in you know it's going to be dog friendly built around uh dogs being in the house easy to clean uh, there's gonna be a dog bath area in the mud room so that when the dogs come in on a muddy spring day we can wash them off right there dry them up then let them into the house obviously all the floors in the house we'll keep in mind that we have dogs they'll probably all be uh, well we'll see what we come up with but they'll be like hardwood or like laminate flooring type deal so that it's easy to clean but anyways i'm gonna i'm going on rabbit trails here i want to start working we're gonna start pushing this way so uh see how far that way we can get today this went pretty quick this i got done this whole area here i got done in just uh, about two hours probably a little less than that Oh, that water's good. So, I think we're going to call it a day for today or an afternoon. Spend a few hours here. Uh, cleared out behind here quite a bit. And then cleared further out that way. And we, I started pushing this down as well here. Just between the bigger trees where I could get the mower mowing everything down because all of these are all coming down all of them but it'll have to be another day it's time for me to go home for supper so everything's straight along here and up that way this is all coming down
a lot of work, but it was a good workout. Got the heart pumping, probably burnt more calories than I took in today, so that's a good thing. I probably walked about 10 miles, back and forth and back and forth. <laughs> And we had pushed it back to about here last time. So all of this to that tree line over there now is what I did today. First mold it down and cut down all these bigger trees that obviously the mower couldn't take. Up to here and then it's gonna go across there to those big trees back there yet and meet up with that clearing that we just came from over there. And this is where the house is going to be. Right in front of us here. Facing that way with big windows facing that way. And then our backyard will be in the trees. Starting to feel more like home every time I come here. Just a little bit every time. Just chip away at it. Just chip away at it slowly, slowly. Once we get all this cleared down, we're going to be left with all the stumps. Get that mini excavator out here, we'll dig those all up, we'll level it out again. And then we'll start staking out where the house is actually going to go. And then uh, start seriously looking up blueprints, I guess, and getting quotes. This is what I feel fulfilled doing. Well, it's not so tight in here anymore. <laughs> a little easier to get in and out. I'm gonna leave these sticks here for now and come organize them into a big pile next time. I feel like I made some progress today. And I'm hungry. We're having George's burgers and fries. It's a popular local, I think it's a local restaurant. I don't know, it's a chain in Winnipeg. They just expanded to Steinbeck. Try it out. I can almost picture the house here already. Almost. Once this whole area is completely cleared and we can start putting stakes in the ground where we want it, it's gonna real come, really come together. This is where our kids are gonna grow up. Once they come along, we're still trying. Hopefully this month. They're gonna miss this whole process of developing it, but hopefully they enjoy it. They can look back on these videos and see all the work we put into it. <laughs> Building everything with them in mind. Don't even know who they are yet boy or girl we don't care just hope that they're healthy George's where are you there you are what is this Victoria Plaza Mall something like that original George's burgers and subs I'm actually pretty excited is it just yeah I guess it's just takeout Got the goods. Man, I'm sore. <laughs> oh, I worked a little harder than I thought I did. Oh, boy. You'd think I'd be a little more used to that, but apparently not. <laughs> I'm excited to try it out. I'm hungry now. I built up quite the appetite today. Wee yo. So we had our George's burgers and fries yesterday. We had uh, what are they little fat boys. Yeah. It's pretty much just a it's a huge burger with uh, we got Greek fries along with it. So it was almost like a poutine, but instead of cheese curds, it had feta in there and with tomatoes. and tomatoes with the fries, Greek fries. It was actually pretty good, but. You were saying that they're better in Winnipeg? Yeah, Winnipeg locations are definitely, like the St. Mary's location is well established. I think that was the original actually. Mm -hmm. Much, much better. But this tasted good, it's just that their patties were a bit thin and 
They marked our burgers wrong, but made them right, but opposite markings. Mm. And they forgot our tzatziki sauce with our fries. So I was a little bit unimpressed. I called and they sounded super confused. They were nice, but super confused. So disorganized. So they just opened here. So all the employees are probably brand new. Yeah, and they probably don't understand the food because most people here know Mennonite food. They don't know Greek food. So, yeah. Well, Greek diner food, so. So they, they'll get it going. They're just uh, getting the... Getting, They're getting the hang of things. Getting the hang of things there. The lay of the land. But the food was still good. But like I said, she yeah. gets extra pickles on her burger because she's gross. That's awesome. One of those. And I get no pickles on my burgers because that's how a burger's supposed to be. No pickles. Pickles don't belong on burgers. I don't know what's wrong with the rest of all of you and the whole rest of this world, but I'm right, you're all wrong. Anyways, they, they marked her burger as mine, so I took a big bite out of her burger and it had extra pickles. <laughs> Serves you right. And I can still taste it. And uh, the fries were pretty good, but like she said, they forgot the tzatziki sauce. So they were a bit dry, very flavorful, but they definitely needed some sort of dip, so I dipped I didn't eat my, many of them. I ate the rest today and I dipped the rest in ranch, which helped. Okay, well, I thought it was delicious anyway. But we're on the next day, it's Sunday right right now. I don't film anything on Sundays usually. I just sort of relax and hang out. And, but since I kind of left you guys hanging with the George's Burgers pickup there and I didn't, uh, didn't talk to you after that, I figured I'd at least fill you in and didn't let you know it was us. delicious. Didn't even give them a status report. No, I got home, I was so hungry. I totally forgot about it. I was just, let's eat. <laughs> oh, jeez. Careful with that butter. Yikes, it's violent. They say you can't hurt yourself with a butter knife. Watch me. Anyway, so for this Sunday evening, it's about what, 6.30 just about. Britt is making my absolute favorite. I was supposed to make this on his birthday, but I wasn't feeling well, so I'm making up for it now. So it's going to be twice as good, right? Absolutely. Schmonfot. Careful, don't don't. Schmonfot and pasta, right? Why isn't this getting very hot? That's my. Qu oh shoot! You turned the wrong uh, one on. No, I didn't turn it up to the correct size. I always forget we have that feature. Shoot! This is a confusing stove. It really, truly is. A lot going on here right now. <laughs> so I'm gonna stay out of your way. We we'll put this together. So it was a good day. We got a lot of progress done at the land again. Uh, it's just gonna go slowly, one thing at a time. Like to, uh, yesterday, all I did was uh, clear some of those bushes. Next time I go there, I'll just clean up all the bushes I cut down. And uh, hopefully sometime this summer, I'll be able to get a, a little mini excavator out there and dig all those stumps out and level it off a little bit. But other than that, we're not planning on doing too much more there this year. Maybe, maybe we'll bring in some crushed rock for a foundation for the driveway sometime later this year. Maybe not. But uh, I just want to get it cleared and usable right now. I'd like to build a like a three season screen room or just a screened room, like a little gazebo somewhere there as well. So at least we can sit and get away from the mosquitoes and be outside while we are there. With enough space for the big guys to play together. In yeah. It without, we want to possibly put a wood stove in it so that we can mm -hmm. sit in there in the chillier evenings, get the most use out of it as possible. But we got to be able to have them in there playing without being in danger of touching the wood stove. So we'll have to come up with something, probably a raised mm. wood stove to keep them safe. Yeah, we'll think of something. But uh, we'd have to get a, a, a building permit just for that as well. And because it has a wood stove in there, a wood burning wood stove, we'd have to get a Insure it. Get it all insured and everything. So it's a couple of steps. So we're not sure if we're going to get that done this year. But like I said, this is like at least a five year plan. It might stretch out to be longer. Because if we if, if we don't end up having kids for a few years, we don't need any more space than this. This is all we need. We can take our time then. But if we end up having like, a, say, a set of twins and then another set of twins or just a set of twins and another one, well, then our days in this little house are numbered and we're going to have to set a more of a definitive date when our build is going to be done so that we can have the space we need when we need it. But until then, stay tuned. Yeah, until then, stay tuned. <laughs> we're nowhere near that point yet. I wish we were, but we're not. Hmm. That's okay. We love this little house. This is all we need. Just look, we got a bathroom. We got a living room, a kitchen, and two bedrooms, and a Chevy. <laughs> 
that's all we need. I got my little workstation here for making these videos for you guys. We got our new bed. Got to get new end tables yet, but eh, what else do we need? Got a nice fenced in yard for the dogs. Got good neighbors on both sides of us. Life's good here. I'm not complaining. I love this little house. It'd be mm -hmm. nice to have a bit more counter space, but I make it work. Yeah. But it's perfect for us right now. So. Mm -hmm. And until we have more than one kid, uh, we don't have to rush building. Exactly. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm going to keep on with the Lotto Max. We'll <laughs> see. Exactly. Our long term plan winning the lottery. <laughs> yeah. I think that's <laughs> most people's long term plan. <laughs> We'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we go back to work.